we've come to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. The word of the Lord declares that in him we live, we move, and have our being. This is our time, even over social media, to give this time to Christ, just to love on him, to clear our minds about all that's going on, and just be reminded that in him we live, in him we have our confidence, in him we trust, and he is going to make everything all right. to you. Uh, this is Pastor Monica Parshi Price. I'm here with a friend and colleague and one of the ministers on our staff of Mount Zion Assembly Healing Temple. Her name is Evangelist Grace Gates. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you chose to join us today. 
Uh, before we begin our Bible study and our in-depth study of the word, we're going to just uh, pray to the Lord that he will continue to have his way. And as we bow our heads, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. It is of your mercies that we are not consumed because your compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Your faithfulness is great. And we appreciate you so much for this opportunity to delve into your word for your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I said, we're here and we're just enjoying the word of God. As you know, we have uh, used creative measures to bring forth the word of God through praise and worship. Last week we had praise and worship and we're going to continue with that. But today we're going to talk about the gift of forgiveness. And I just want to start off with the scripture. What does, the God, what does God say about forgiveness? He says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Mark 11.25 says, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you and your trespasses. And we know that forgiveness is not easy sometimes, especially when you feel justified, when things have been done to you. It's easier said than done, but the power of the Holy Ghost gives us an opportunity to come to the Father and ask for forgiveness. And he gives us that power to forgive others when it's not easy. And even if you don't have the Holy Ghost, there's something you can ask of God, Lord, forgive me so that I can forgive others. And so, as I said, we're joined with our, one of our evangelists on our ministerial board, Evangelist Grace Gates, and she's going to just start off with what God has given her about forgiveness. And this is going to be a series of messages that you will hear in the future. And she has been such, she's been such, done such a wonderful job of this. We're going to ask her to start off at this time. Praise the Lord, Evangelist Gates. Oh, praise the Lord. This Bishop. is a conversation about forgiveness. Go ahead. Praise the Lord, Bishop. We praise and we thank the Lord for the opportunity to uh, come before you all and to with the uh, Bishop to discuss the gift of forgiveness. You know, when you think of a gift, a gift is something that is giving willfully to someone. And what makes it very important is when it's given in love. So when we look at our title, The Gift of Forgiveness, um, we know that forgiveness is a gift. It's a gift that comes from God. And it's something that the world needs really need at this time and not mm -hmm. only the world but the church as well mm -hmm. so giving forgiveness is one of the rare gifts because it's the giver of the gift that seems that benefits more than the recipient of that gift so we praise and we thank the lord we're going to be dealing with some of the things the benefits of of this great <coughs> gift and not only is it a gift but also it requires a sacrifice as well good good so we're going to start with luke 20 3 and 34 correct and that reads it says then said jesus father forgive them for they know not what they do and this is jesus on the cross uh coming he um being crucified before his death um he jesus um Pray, Father, forgive them, mm -hmm. for they know not what they do. Again, that's Luke 23 and 34. Okay, isn't that interesting that that's the first thing he said on the cross? On the cross? On the cross. The first thing he said was, they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Forgive them. But what about people who know what they're doing? And I think that's, that's the hard part about it. That's the challenge when you know people know what they're doing, but yet... We're still required to give them we that. We still gift. have to do it. We still have to do it. And and it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's a gift and God would not allow us, tell us to do something that we he, he would not give us to empower empower us to do it. Absolutely. So now when we look at this, Jesus being the example, and Jesus um, he asked forgiveness for them before they asked to be forgiven. They didn't even know they needed it. They didn't even know they needed it. But yet, Jesus asked, he forgave them. And, and so what's so amazing about what he did is because he didn't wait for them to ask again for the forgiveness. Mm. That's powerful. So he gave it. He gave it to them because he knew they needed it. And like Bishop said, 
Um, they didn't know what they were doing. So he asked for that. And in doing so, Jesus set a high standard for the gift of forgiveness. Isn't that something? He always is the example. He's our prime example. Yes. He always sets the standard. And so in a time now where everybody's looking for everyone for answers, Jesus is the answer. He sets the example. He sets the standard. He sets the standard, and that standard was high. So, and you know, and, and also when God, requires something of us in this case is not optional he's commanding us while well, he's telling us mm -hmm. you know what forgive mm -hmm. and not only is he telling us that but it's for our benefit mm -hmm. when we do it and he can't he does not he's not telling us to do something that he is not always already giving us the power to do Correct. but we're looking within ourselves and that's the problem when we look at ourselves and say Lord, I can't do this. No, you can. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And that's one of the things that we have to remember with God. And as long as with God is with us, it can be done. Absolutely. So forgiveness. What is forgiveness? I was um, Bishop Clifton Jones uh, wrote a book years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was about oh, over 15 years ago. And it's called God's Gift for the Whole Family. He was talking about forgiveness and I was thinking when you think of a family in a family you have imperfect people absolutely and with imperfect people there's going to be time where we're going to offend or we're going to do something that the other person does not like absolutely and yet especially now when everybody's being quarantined why right. <laughs> everybody's on top of each other that is so that is so <laughs> they're true. going to be offended that is so true and when I thought about the, the book uh, medicine, I thought, well, what is the aim of medicine? The aim of medicine is to promote and maintain health and well-being. Let's say the name of his book again. So and his book know. is Forgiveness, God's Medicine for the Whole God's Family. Medicine. It's God's Medicine. And one of the things about medicine, in order for it to be effective, we have to take it. We have to take it. We have to take the medicine. That's good. We have to take it. And in taking it again, uh, the benefits of taking a medicine are the helpful effects that we get when we um, when we use them, mm -hmm. such as when we take medicine to lower our blood pressure mm -hmm. or curing an infection or relieving pain. It really works. Mm -hmm. But again, we have to take it. And one of the things I thought about, Bishop, is medicine sometimes it's not always it doesn't always taste good sometimes it tastes nasty doesn't it? it doesn't taste good at all but guess what it's the benefit of doing it and that's one of the things that god has given us in forgiveness forgiveness is not easy to do but we have to look at the benefits that it that is attached to the well, forgiveness. They say it doesn't taste good to you but it's good for you there you go <laughs> that is wonderful so i was thinking when i was looking about forgiveness I thought about when Jesus in John 5th chapter verse 6, mm -hmm. he said to him, there was a man that had been laying a uh, bishop at the um, well. I know he was, has been laying at he the pool. Yeah. Yes. For over, I think it was about 38 years. About 30, yeah. And when Jesus saw him, Jesus said to him, will thou be made whole? And mm -hmm. first I thought, what a question to ask. So I mean, the man is sick. Right. He's been laying for 36 years. Why would he do that? But what I found out is that he wanted the the, um, the man mm -hmm. to really to make a decision. They make a decision. a decision as to whether or not he wants to remain as he was, or if he wanted to provide Jesus what he needed, which mm -hmm. was faith, so mm -hmm. that he could be made whole. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he, he had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to understand that as a young saint, but it's a decision. Yeah, it's must a decision. Be made. And you would think a person who is infirmed or someone who's sick, you would think, oh, sure, they want to be whole. But a lot of people now, you, you, when, you, when you give them the remedy for something, they don't take it. And that does make us question their decision. Do you really want to be made whole? Just on a funny note, many years ago, uh, I was praying for someone, and she happened to be an elderly lady. Um, but she was still working, but mm -hmm. she was on disability. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, you know, if I'm praying that God heal you, you're not going to have to be on disability anymore. And do you know she stopped and said, wow, you mean I have to go back to work? I don't know. <laughs> it's almost like she didn't want to be healed yeah. because with healing and forgiveness comes responsibility. That's it. But that's I'm going to let you finish because I don't want to get ahead of your no, nose. That's it, Pastor. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is an act of love, mercy, and grace. Mm -hmm. It's a decision to not hold someone 
something against another person despite what they have done to you. That's a tough one. That's hard. That's hard. And you know, and when you look at that, it's a decision, but it's a hard thing to do because there's some things that happen to us. The wound is so devastating yeah. and the wound is so deep and fresh. It, that's a good when one. When it's a fresh wound, you're not you don't want to forgive right away because you're still in your feelings, mm -hmm. you still feel justified and you're hurt. Right. And because of that hurt, like Bishop said, we feel justified because we feel that person don't deserve it, don't deserve the forgiveness. But some things, you know what, as, it, as we said, it's an act of love, mercy, and grace. And even when you look at grace, grace is something that isn't, it doesn't, it's not deserved, it's unmerited. We don't deserve it, Absolutely. but yet we give it in spite of, because that's what Jesus did to us. Absolutely. And it goes exactly back to what I said in the beginning, Ephesians 4 and 32. Right. Be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving, forgiving. for the giving. Mm -hmm. Even as God, for your Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And that's a tough pill. It's mm -hmm. not easy. Being saved is not always easy. You have to make a decision to go back to your other point. Walking with Christ is, is it's, once you make your mind up, you, you're, you're, you're clear about your resolve to praise him. Mm -hmm. But along the way, there are things that discourage you. Along the way, there are things that make it not easy because we're in our flesh we are and unless we walk in the spirit and abide in the spirit we're going to continue to react from the flesh way that is so true that is so true so again uh it's not easy it's not easy but yet we're required to do mm -hmm. it and we again have to make a decision am i'm going to be self-centered and, mm -hmm. and and do things my way mm -hmm. or am i going to Trust God. And what does that mean? Doing it by faith. Stepping out in faith. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. Because in order for us to do this, it's all about faith. You know, you can't do it apart from faith. And so when we look at faith, what is faith? Faith, faith is trusting God, and meaning that I don't see any evidence, mm -hmm. but I'm going to trust God and submit in obedience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And obedience. Uh oh. <laughs> It's, it's obedience, not the praise and worship, y'all. We love to sing. I'm a psalmist. I love to sing. But singing is not the highest form of worship. Obedience to God's word is the highest form of obedience. And that's, a, that's, a, that's another uh, way that people have to understand that that's God's way is obedience. It is. It is. And, and I thought I think about years ago, Bishop Parche Sr., he said that uh, in obedience, and he was talking about the pain and the suffering, and he said something while he was ministering, and he said, your victory and your deliverance is a tell on the other side of the pain. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to get on the other side, we have to have that faith. Oh, we have to have, have to have, and this is a time period where we have to really exercise our faith. Yes, and yes, I looked yes. at the government, and I look at the president. But what did God say? God's way of obedience, God's way of 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 administering His word and reading His word and taking in. Jeremiah said, "Eat the whole roll." So we have to really digest and ingest uh, the whole roll of God. Amen. Amen. So, given the gift of forgiveness. You know, when you look at this, when you look at giving the gift and you look at the condition that you have to give the gift, because mm -hmm. most of the time when the condition is I'm hurt, I have been wounded, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm very, you know, I'm in my feelings, mm -hmm. and yet God is requiring us, guess what, to give the gift. To give the to gift. To give this the gift. gift of forgiveness, wow. So again, if we look at the condition, it doesn't seem like a gift. But it's the benefit. And the scripture that came to mind was when Jesus said, I think it was in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 15. And it says how Jesus despised the, the shame of the cross. Mm. But he looked beyond mm. it. Yes. And he saw what, what was beyond it. Absolutely. And guess what? He embraced the obedience and he was able to go through it. And that's something we have to have. We have to have vision to see beyond what we see. Because we're looking at the immediate pain instead of looking what's on the other side of the pain. Victory's right. on the other side of the pain. That's right. Deliverance is on the other side of the pain. If you're just concentrating on what's affecting you now, you won't even understand the, 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 the aspect of heaven. Right. We won't understand the aspect of victory. Right, right. 
So we have to really make a decision. Do we do we believe and trust God? Right. We right. do it by faith. And I was thinking, even with uh, when when you take a step of faith, mm -hmm. we don't always see the results right away. No. But that's when the more we continue to walk by faith, consistency. then consistency, and then guess what? We begin to see the effects of the forgiveness. Absolutely. In our lives. And you know when you can tell mm -hmm. when someone does something to you and it doesn't hurt anymore? That's it. They're, they're jabbing at the same spot. And you know you have truth. And I know I'm probably going ahead of your notes. Okay. But that's how you can really tell when you have been delivered, forgiven, and you know how to forgive. When that same person walks into the room or that same situation happens and it doesn't affect you the same way. Right. Then you know, oh, I'm delivered. That doesn't affect me the same way. That's I'm forgiven. Right. I don't have those desires or I don't have a desire to retaliate. And that's our issue because we want to retaliate in our flesh. We really do. We want you to. I want you to feel what you did to me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we do. And again, given the gift of forgiveness, I thought about um, Matthew the 18th chapter, verses 21 and 23, and it reads: Then Peter came to him, to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him mm -hmm. till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but seventy times seven. Wow. That's a lot of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But yet we are required. Now when we look at this in uh, the next slide, in Luke 17 and verses 3 to 5, it reads, The same scripture, or the same scenario, Take heed to yourself, if thy brother transgress against thee, rebuke him, and mm -hmm. if he repent, forgive him. And if he transgress trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day turn again to thee saying I repent thou shall forgive him and the apostles look what they said <laughs> unto them Lord increase our Lord, faith Lord increase my faith <laughs> this person is not forgiving me Lord give me more faith All right. that's incredible and that's what that's is incredible. incredible he, he Increase the faith. So we know he's not talking about an action number 490. No. We know that however long it takes. However long. To keep, because I, I saw something not too long ago. Someone said, <clears throat> okay, I'm at my 489th. What do I do? <laughs> uh -huh. That's good. And sometimes we do feel like, okay, this keeps happening. This is it. But yet we have to give the gift. Because again, in giving the gifts, it's the the giver of the gifts that receives the most benefit. Absolutely. And 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 the one of the and the benefits we'll talk about that a little later on. Is um, scientists, um, medical professional have said that when we give the gift of forgiveness, mm -hmm. that it benefits us spiritually and not just spiritually but physically as well. Those endorphins are released. Right. I believe that. Right. And you let things go because I believe the stress is an inhibitor right. that stops certain things. I believe the stress affects the body and people who can uh, laugh and brush it off. There's something to be said to just letting it go. It you, know, it, you know, the, 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 the serpent that attached himself to uh, uh, Paul in the fire, he just shook it off in the mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. And there's something that we have to do. It's easier said than done, I know. Mm -hmm. But we have to learn through the word of God. Because they're not only offending you, they're offending your God. Right. So you have to realize this is not my battle. Let me just let this go. And let it go. And so for my health's sake. Right, exactly. And let it your go spiritual some... immune system going. That's good. I love that. I love that. Our spiritual immune system going. And you know, so we really do. It, it's, it's a walk of faith. We have to trust God. And some things we do, not so much because we feel like it, Bishop, but because we love God. Absolutely. It's we not do. based on our emotion. Salvation is not based on your emotion at all. We love God. And in the midst of us, again, moving forward by faith, God gives us the benefit. We begin to reap the benefit, mm -hmm. and we see it. So next, what we want to do, so now we talked about um, just as important it is to define what forgiveness is, we also have to look at what forgiveness is not. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, it does not deny the seriousness of an offense against you. Yeah. So yeah. forgiveness, just because right. we forgive someone, that doesn't say that I'm denying that That's the right. offense That's a good point. Hurt. That's a good point because sometimes we feel, well, it wasn't all that. Yeah, it really was. Yes, but I'm choosing. Choosing. To wipe the slate clean. And that's, that's again, that's 
that's the gift of forgiveness and what forgiveness is, making that choice. And it also does not mean forgetting the offense happened this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And really, if you think about it, we we don't forget. But you know what? Why do people say forgive and forget? Some people don't feel like, well, you haven't forgiven me if you forget. Now, if I keep bringing it up, it may make you wonder, well, did you really forgive me because you keep bringing it up? But we don't have amnesia. Right. And right? That's, and that's the thing. So G, he throws them in the sea of forgiveness, right. but I don't have a sea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lake. So, so, but I know that as a Christian, people expect, people who are not Christian seem to expect of things of us right. that, that, that they, number one, don't expect of themselves. Right. And, and they want to put things on us where well, you're a Christian, you should do this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let's go with the Bible says. Right. And he throws them in the sea of forgiveness. But say, for instance, you shoot my mother. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to forget that. But because I want to be saved mm-hmm. and I have been forgiven, I have to forgive you because you're a soul. Right. And I think if we look at people as souls and not an individual with a name, then I think we'll be get we'll get through this better. We'll mm-hmm. get through this whole situation in our life. It's not just Corona nineteen, a uh, uh, Corona COVID nineteen. It's not just about that. This is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Yes, it is. And I, as you were talking, Bishop, then we have to define what forget means. Forgetting mm-hmm. and forget the forgetting mm-hmm. means that you know what not to hold it against someone. Not to hold it or. If forget forgetting means that, as she was saying, I don't remember. That's not what it's re- uh, referring to, because, like you said, unless your brain dead, you're going to remember. Yeah. And so, but we have to understand. And there are some situations where you really, un- until somebody brings it to your attention, it's not. In other words, it's not at the forefront of your mind. Right. That's it. That's, that's really it. what it is, because sometimes I have forgotten. People say, "Remember that time I said so and so about you?" I'm like. I don't remember until they start giving detail like, oh, in other words, I'm able to recall it, but it's so far back. I've got other important. I've got heaven in my view. That's beautiful. I don't have the fact that you offended me in my view. That's good. So sometimes we have to really recall, like, did you really say that? Oh, Mm -hmm. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Because it's not up front. No. Yeah. And then that's another sign that we have forgiven. Yeah. That's another sign. That's a good sign. And also, it does not mean um, condoning or excusing the offense. Yeah, it doesn't mean that. It also doesn't mean that um, the relationship sometimes will be restored. Even though sometimes we may want the relationship to continue, sometimes it doesn't. That's a tough one. It is. It's That's tough. tough because reconciliation is why Jesus came to the earth to reconcile us back to the Father. Mm-hmm. So when you think about it, it you know, we, our relationship is not going to be reconciled. That's hard. It's hard. And especially when it's with someone that you really love. Yeah. And yeah. But yet you have to look at that other person. They have the right to decide too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they don't want the relationship to continue, even though we might pray for it too. And sometimes it just doesn't. And also, you have to look at the dynamics of the relationship. Yeah. Some relationship never should have been anyway. Come on here. So it's so you know <laughs> so hey. We have to look at so much. There's so many factors to look at. It is talk about forgiveness. It really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. And also, it does not release the offender from legal accountability. Uh Uh-oh, it doesn't. It doesn't sometimes, depending on what the wrong was, what the thing was that occurred, sometimes it has to be taken, for example, if someone rapes someone, it has to be taken to court. Yeah. Or if someone take a lie. So even though they are forgiven, they steal their legal accountability. They have to be accountable for that. So it's important that that we understand what is forgiveness is not. Now, we're going to talk about the freedom that comes through forgiveness. So forgiveness means, as we had stated, giving up suffering of the past and being willing to forge ahead with, with far greater potential for inner freedom. Besides the reward of letting go of the painful past, medical professional says, there are powerful health benefits that go hand in hand with the practice of forgiveness. And one of that is it gives the forgiver peace of mind mm-hmm. knowing that God is pleased. 
Mm. And that's one of the things that we want to do. Our number one goal is to please God. Love and please God. And so to forgive it and to do it again as an act of faith, knowing we have a peace of mind knowing that I have done the thing that God has required mm. of me. Nothing is nothing's like that. You can sleep at night when you know you have pleased God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God because mm -hmm. he pleased him. And as we walk with God, even through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. and we see death and disease all around us, we want to know we have pleased God. Amen. And also, uh, the freedom that comes from forgiveness, it frees him or her from the corrosiveness of anger. Wow. And one of the things, too, one of the worst things that we can do, if anger, the scripture says, anger lies in the heart of, I think it says, a fool. Rest in the bosom of a fool. Rest in the bosom of a fool. Yeah. And we don't want the anger because wherever anger is, it spreads into so many other things. And we're going to deal with that later on in, in, in one of the our future series. Anger is dangerous. It's dangerous. People are angry now with the sickness. And, right. Uh, some of you know we have a school, and I've never seen the spirit of anger just come. Mm -hmm. um, the world right now, people are angry. Where did this come from? Where did this sickness come from? And we have to place everything at the feet of Jesus. Our anger, everything. Uh, and people losing their jobs, or they're 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 losing their loved ones, and so there's an anger uh, that has to be released and say, Lord, I even God wants you to bring him everything. everything. Bring him your anger. Everything. Bring him your disappointment. And sometimes people feel like, well, I have to be perfect to go to God. No, you don't. Bring him everything. He'll sort out the other stuff. Bring him everything. He'll sort out the pain and he'll sort out the forgiveness. And you have to ask him for a heart uh -huh. of forgiveness. Because I said a couple, couple days ago, sometimes we just don't have a mind to do things. You have to say, Lord, help my mind. I want to be, I want to be pleasing in your sight. Help give me a spirit of obedience. And beloved, if you don't have a spirit of forgiveness or uh, or uh, obedience or deliverance, ask God for that mind. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But you have to ask God for the will. Because sometimes we don't want to forgive. We don't. We, we don't want to be obedient. We want we want to give you a piece of our mind. Mm -hmm. We don't have that much. We can't afford to give nothing <laughs> up right now. So you even have to ask God, Lord, help me. To be right. Help me to be righteous. Help me to forgive. Give me a mind to be obedient, because I don't want to be obedient right now. Right. I want. I want. I want revenge. And we know that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So Amen. all the things that come with freedom, uh, because of forgiveness, is so important. So and and again, forgiveness transform anger and hurt into healing and peace. That's and that's what it's all about. Transform. Transform the transformation that occur as we forgive. It's, 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 it's a work of God. Yes. And also it involves letting go of deeply held negative feelings. And sometimes we want to hold on to those feelings because we feel justified. Yeah. But the healing occurs and the benefits occur, as Bishop said, we release those things. Because to hold on to them is to experience depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. and, and rage sometimes. And when it turns into rage, it's yeah. really out of order. Yeah. It really is. You've got to control at that point. You're not yes. in control of your own mouth. Because no. people just blah, 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 blah. They're just right. out of control. Right. So it's about making a con conscious decision to let go of grudges. Mm -hmm. And it empowers you to recognize the pain you suffer without letting the pain define you. That's powerful. Without because a lot of us do, do like a lot of people do let their future, um, you know, de their their past define their future rather. And so they say, well, this is what I've always been, and so this is what my lot must be. And that's not true because God is able to change it. So if if we trust a God who is able to transform us, mm -hmm. He's able to transform our pain, right. and He's able to transform our future. Right. So don't let the pain define you. Don't let past relationships keep you from a good relationship in the future happening. And so often we do that. We do. We 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 we're we're defined by what happened to us instead of letting God happen to us. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Let, allowing God to happen to yeah, us. Yeah, let God so allow it so happen. Awesome. Let, let him happen to you. That is so awesome. It enables us to heal and to move on with our lives. 
And I thought about the scripture where Jesus said he came that we might have life in that more abundantly. Yes. And so as we begin to forgive, it frees us so that we can. Yeah. And that God can help us to experience this greatness, this gift of forgiveness. And so uh, another thing is the reward. Uh, the Mayo Clinic says that the reward of letting go of a painful past, there are painful health, there are powerful health, excuse me, the reward of letting go of a painful past, mm -hmm. there are powerful health benefits. Mm -hmm. In the physical dom uh, domain, forgiveness is associated with lower uh, heart rate, mm -hmm. blood pressure, as well as overall stress relief. And I believe Bishop talked about that. It improves our physical health, our sense symptoms, it reduces uh, fatigue, and it also helps us to sleep better at night. A lot yeah. of to hold on to unforgiveness, true. a lot of people, it's a result. Some people have insomnia. Yeah. Insomnia. Yeah. That's they can't sleep say, at night. Those um, breathing exercises. Right. That's why we have to have those breathing exercises. Right. Like we had a debris conference a couple weeks ago, right. but we, uh, you all weren't there, but we had a wonderful exercise where just listening to calming music with birds in the background, some people call it like a white noise, some people have um, uh, devices where this music comes through and just breathe. Mm -hmm. Take in the Ruach. Mm -hmm. The Ruach of God is the yes. breath of God. Yes. Take in God's breath and just allow him to breathe through you. Let me tell you, it's not just a exercise. It really works. Yes, it, it really, really works. Does. And again, we're, we're, we're about to conclude this set. Well, this series, the first series of the gift of forgiveness. We've laid a foundation here. Later on, we're going to be dealing with some more things. But again, it's uh, forgiveness. It's the gift of God. And as we give it, we experience those benefits as well. Bishop, did you want to have anything? Just, to just looking forward to um, delving in the scriptures, uh, dealing with the topic that everyone knows that we should do, but it's not always easy to do. So we encourage you to whatever you're going through in your home, in your life, on your job, just let it go. And the world has expression, let it go. But the Bible talks about the forgiveness that we experience from God. We can't just hold that give. Well, God forgive me, God forgive me. But we have to forgive other people. It's a whole equation. It's not just you and God. It's not. It's, it's a wonderful equation of having of, of, of having a vertical relationship with God. That's all well and good, and you got to have that first. But it's how we live horizontally yes. with our neighbors, our spouses, our children, our church community, the faith community, people on our job, because. We are the Jesus, we hear it all the time, we are the Jesus that people see. They don't know Jesus, and so we have to become Jesus. We have to become Christ-like. And is it always easy? No, because we're living in flesh, and if you pinch me, I may say, ouch. You know, if you pinch me, it'll hurt. So we do live in the flesh, we just don't walk after the flesh. So we encourage you, um, as we're about to close for this segment, just continue to let God speak through you, God knows how to speak through crisis. He knows how to speak through pain. He knows how to speak through disappointment. But our faith lies in God. Our faith and our commitment and our hope. David said, my expectation is from you, O oh God. So we expect God to help us through this thing. And we're just continuing to read our word and just to have faith and our focus. So keep your faith and focus on God and God will bring you through. We love you in Jesus' name. Again, my name is Pastor Monica Parshu Price, and this is Evangelist Grace Gates. We look to come to you in the future in just a few days. Our church is Mount Zion Assembly Healing Temple, 4300 North Green Bay Avenue, here in the beautiful city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. God bless you. Keep faith alive and keep hope alive. God bless you. Amen. Can you give our miracle worker a hand tonight?